Since the beginning of 2020, oil prices have been in decline thanks to the coronavirus. As major economies have been shut down and planes, trains and most cars are parked up and empty, the demand for oil has almost completely dried up. However, the same cannot be said for the supply side, as oil producers continued to pump oil. Oil wells are not like taps that can be switched on and off. It costs money to close them down and reopen them, and so the suppliers will continue pumping oil, even if they're making a loss, expecting and hoping that the oil price will rise in the near future. This, coupled with geopolitical arguments over failed production cuts, has created a massive surplus of oil, which led to storage issues and the price of WTI in particular falling into the negative for the first time in history. Here's how it happened. To properly understand what went wrong, we first have to understand how negative pricing is even possible. To use a real life example, if you have a large item that you no longer need and don't have time to sell, or perhaps it holds no value, you can pay someone to come and pick it up and take it away. That could be excess rubbish sacks that the bin men won't collect, or an old faulty washing machine. You're paying someone to take away the products that you no longer need, and since the product has no value to you and the service costs you money, that's how the price becomes negative. What many people don't realize is that unlike many other publicly traded investments, oil needs to be physically stored, whether that be in tankers, pipelines, or in barrels, and evidently that takes up a lot of room. With demand falling, storage facilities around the world started to fill up, and on the 20th of April, the West Texas Intermediate Futures price fell to minus $40, meaning that oil producers were paying $40 for someone to take each barrel away. Oil, however, is not that simple to just buy at a low price and sell a few weeks later at a higher price. The buyer needs to consider the cost of transporting the oil from the well to a storage facility where it may need to be held for up to six months at a considerable cost, and they would need oil prices to rise in order to get a positive return on investment. Despite all oil markets around the world having slumped into what is known in the industry as contango, whereby the commodity price is higher in the future than it is in the present, the WTI oil has been the worst affected, thanks to the US pumping out 10 million barrels of oil every day. Producers with closer access to the coastline and ports were able to fill up oil tankers with massive capacity and send them out to sea. This came at great cost, which saw a record number of barrels stored on the ocean, but in Texas they didn't have that luxury, and the storage infrastructure quickly became overwhelmed, hence the price plummeting and anyone with an oil shipment of American crude found themselves having to pay someone to take on their futures contract. The futures contract is the way that oil is traded, with an agreement being set up between two parties at a defined price to hedge against future fluctuations in the price. But as storage facilities were filling up, nobody wanted to be left on the hook to take delivery of the oil with nowhere to store it. Many people have been asking whether the oil price will affect everyday petrol that we use in our cars. The price drop has been seen by everyday consumers, as petrol is now slightly cheaper, although it's not really a true reflection of oil prices as it includes taxes and the profit margins for the suppliers. And don't expect to be paid to fill up your car, as the negative price has only lasted one day. The prices will only remain low whilst demand is low, so by the time we're all back in the car, the price will likely have returned to normal. Having said that, it will entirely depend on when lockdown ends and planes, trains and automobiles can get back up and running. If nobody is going on holiday and flying to other countries, prices will likely remain low, waiting for the surplus to be used up to avoid a sticky crude oil mess. And that's how it happened. Please like and subscribe to the channel, and let us know what you want to see next by leaving a comment below. Thanks for watching.